www.gateradio.com. Welcome, everybody. This is Joe Larson. You're watching the 505 on Racing Show. Welcome. Welcome to another night. Hope everybody had a nice Labor Day weekend last week. I know I did. I was away for the weekend and, and got to spend some quality time uh, with, with some good friends and some quality time with myself. And, of course, uh, I want to thank Tracy Trico, uh, Bethel Motor Speedway, for her hospitality as uh, Kevin Basic and along on Need for Speed and, and I with the 505 on Racing Show were up there interviewing some of the, the old guys from the old days. It was nostalgia night there. And um, you know, the nice thing about that is you, you get to see some of the guys from what I call yesteryear. And the guys who I remember watching as a little kid. And I can remember going to Ice Speed as a little kid, and maybe being like 10 or 12 years old. And I remember Larry Mendelson and, and, and Sonny Granger and, and they're talking about this, the, the American Three Quarter Midget Racing Association that used to race at ISO Speedway a lot, if I remember correctly. And I remember this guy with one arm. And, uh, I, 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 and there he was. It's like 50 years later, 40 years later, and there he was. So um, we recorded some interviews. We're going we're gonna to play those interviews at a later date. In fact, I have a bunch of interviews we're putting together, some nostalgia interviews from, from the old days and some of the new guys as well. Um, so that, that'll be good. But it was his steer wheel, and, and, and his name escapes me right now, but his steer wheel had a, had a look, it, it looked like, it, like a gear almost attached to the steer wheel. His hook just clicked in, and in different locations. There were eight, it was, it was seven or eight different holes that he could click into, I guess, depending on what he needed to do. It was just amazing. It was just amazing. Um, but uh, you know, Bethel Motor Speedway, I'll tell you what. What a fan-friendly, family-friendly facility. Tracy and her staff up there, Bethel, uh, they do a really nice job. And, and there, was, there was signs like everywhere. <laughs> there was this one sign that I, that I never noticed before. I've been there a couple of times. And it said, uh, um, if you use profanity, you are out. And you know what? I, I'll tell you what. I, and I didn't hear people getting crazy with language in the grandstands. Um, even if somebody spun or got into it with somebody else, there was nobody screaming and yelling. The language, that it, I'm telling you, was just a, such a family-oriented place. Um, the legend cars were there that night, the Bondoleros. I saw some guys from Long Island who, who were up there missing a points race in their home track, and, uh, and only because they're not chasing points. I mean, that's not the only reason, but uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a nice day. It was a nice day. And then, of course, uh, you know, the Sunday and Monday of Labor Day weekend, I just got some R&R. &R. And much needed R and R, I might add. It was really, really good. So it was good to see WJ on today. I want to tell you, um, we had a nice time at the at the Walters house this past Saturday. A bunch of race people came out, and some family and friends, and just sat and talking racing, talking racing. And it was, and it was, it was just, it was a nice day. And we got it in before the rains came. So uh, I want to thank uh, WJ Walter and, and, and his family for putting on that. Uh, that nice affair this weekend. It was just, just nice to do. In fact, it was Sunday, not Saturday, because Saturday most people went out to the, to the races somewhere. Speaking of races, Saturday, the tri Chalk Series was at the New London Waterford Speed Bowl. Ronnie Silk uh, was the winner there with Steve Massey second, Matt Hirschman third, Ryan Priest was fourth, and Les Hinckley rounded out the top five. Um, there was a lot of money paid out to that to these individuals. Actually, the, the guy who started last got $500, thanks to the Long Island Mod Maniac. And, uh, and, and I want to talk about that. And, and, and please don't take this in a negative way. And, and I appreciate the efforts that the, the, the Modified Maniac does. Uh, trust me, I, be, I believe in what he does, and, and I like what he does. But I'll even go one step further. It's great for the competitors. 
But I, I got to wonder why. I go to these dirt races now. I go to a lot of dirt races, and, and, the, and the money's paid out to these dirt races isn't coming from guy, some guy raising funds to make it happen. Funds are coming from the promoters, from the track operators, from the sponsors of these tracks, because I think that's what they're supposed to do. They shouldn't be counting on some guy who's generous and, and is out hustling a buck for the competitors. Again, I appreciate what he does, and I'll tell you what, that's an awesome, awesome gesture. I've, I've spoken to him one-on-one -on -one about this. I've tried to get him on the show to talk about it. He's a very humble man. Um, he doesn't need accolades. He doesn't need a pat on back. He, his, his happiness is when he sees a guy open that envelope and sees the money. But the things that he does with that, the things that he does and how he comes up with this, I, I, case in point, one of, the, one of the hotel chains that he stays at, he has a gazillion points there. And when you read my points, the points that you go, oh, you stay at night, you get so many points, and you say you get so many points, you get free nights. Well, what he's done is he takes those free nights and he helps people who need rooms, but when he goes himself, he pays. He, or he gets the points and he takes the money that he would have paid and he puts it into the kitty. Who else would do something like that? The man deserves uh, more than just a pat on the back and, and, and he won't accept that because he's not doing it for the accolades. Yeah, he did it in the beginning of this season. He talked about, I'm not doing this no more. People don't appreciate it. Trust me, they appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm not even you know, racing any, any of the series that you're going. But my, my, my disappointment is, why hasn't a track stepped up and says, what did you raise? Oh, you raised 10,000? We're going to match that and spread it out. Nobody's done that. Nobody's done that. And, and maybe not match it dollar for dollar, but hey, you know what? This should be something clicking in their heads. We need to help these persons. I know it's hard to do in this economy today. I know it's hard to do. You know, and, and, and I've spoken to some track, rec track operators off the record, and some of them say, yeah, we'd like to give the street stocks a, a, a raise, or we'd like to give the, the, the limited sportsmen a raise, or we'd like to give this. How do you give one class a raise and not the other? And, and now you start looking at you know, what, it, what it costs to, to operate a racetrack. And it's not always easy to get a raise, but if you can get a good sponsor, if you get a, a, a weekly divisional sponsor, a weekly a night sponsor, where you get a seasonal sponsor for, or for a division, or even for your racetrack that puts up X, Y, Z dollars. You know, and, and here's my opinion on that. I'm ABC Corporation, and I go to a local racetrack somewhere in my, you know, my town in Idaho, wherever it might be, and I say, hey, listen, I got 10 grand. You have four divisions. Let's put two grand in each division across the line, and you take 2,000 for your advertising, for your, for your promotion, and all that kind of stuff. But give 80% of it back to the competitors so that they, they get a decent purse to race. All I ask is that you put up a billboard and we can call it the, you know, the Acme you know, 100 lapper or something. And uh, our race tracks won't do that. And, and I don't understand that. You know, and, and, and Marlene Eve has become a you know, $50,000 for the Eastern States uh, 200. The Eastern States 200 will be the 54th running of the Eastern States 200 at the Orange County Fair Speedway, the legendary, legendary House of Power, as it's called. Um, it'll be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, October 23rd, 24th, and 25th. If you've never been to an Eastern States race, you might want to check it out. Uh, I went to my first Eastern States 200 back in 1977 uh, with, with a good friend of mine, uh, Bill Stockett, my, my racing partner back in the 70s, and, and uh, my daughter's crew chief while she was racing. And, and I went a, a, a couple of times with, with friends. You know, it, it's kind of funny, the guy, the old Ron Conkema gang from here on Long Island, uh, Mike Dentrone, Joe Halaki. Uh, uh, man, it, it, we just, we had a great time uh, going up there. So I'll, I'll be going up to that again, it looks like. And uh, you know, check it out, it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's, they get a good crowd for that. And, you know, but it's worth the, the price of admission. I don't know what the admission's gonna be, I don't get into that too much because um, I, I, I'm, I'm a media guest there, so um, I get in through in Rayfield.com and uh, 505 on Racing Show. But uh, I, I believe the, the winner of that event gets $20,000. And in, it's like a who's who of dirt track racing uh, on the eastern seaboard and some ports further west. So that's, that's all a good thing. But again, uh, 
I, I just don't understand how, how, you know, how some of these tracks aren't looking at this guy, Jim Shaver, and saying, listen, what can we do to help you? Well, because he's helping them. And uh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I read what the payouts was, how the additional monies that were paid out, and I believe uh, Ryan still pocketed an extra $5,000 plus from the monies raised um, from, from Jim Schaefer. And, and of course, the, the last place guy ended up with a minimum of $500 for the event. And uh, you don't see that. You don't see those kind of payoffs. And I know he's done that at the, at the local racetrack, the tri-track series he's working on, worked on all, all these last couple of years. And, and that's, that's what it's all about. It's making it happen. And you know what? Here's, here's a guy that maybe he really should be the promotional guy for a local racetrack somewhere and promoting that stuff to get these raises and high purses into these competitors. Because let, let me tell you something. I, you know, the, the cost to race a race car, whether it's Long Island, Connecticut, te Texas, Tennessee, wherever you may race, the Carolinas, the cost of running a competitive race car is, is, has skyrocketed. You know, if you look at the chart, it's gone like this. And the purses have stayed like this. It used to be, and, and talking with Jerry Cook, who's the NASCAR uh, competition director, and talking to Jerry Cook about that, years ago, when he first started racing, you could make a living racing. You could make a living. Pay your expenses, pay your bills at home, and have money left over you know, at, at the end. And you could do that back then, because the cars weren't as sophisticated and as expensive as they are today. And the purses were up there. The purses were up there. You, you look at, I, I, and I, I can remember the tour races here on Long Island paying $6,000 to win. And I remember it being touted as the, the highest paying race per mile. 200 lap of 50 miles, 6,000 to win. That race today, today that race only pays like 2,400. You know? Um, 2400 to win, that's like a weekly payoff. Some tracks pay $2,500 to win to the feature division. Now, considering the cost, what it costs to get on Long Island with your hauler and your, your crew and your, the hotels in the summer on Long Island, especially on the East End, the winner loses money. And, and not that we're in this racing business to, to make money, as I've been told, but you know what? When you're in a touring level series, that, that's, that's not a hobby anymore. That's, that's a business. That's a business, and um, the purses need to be a little bit bigger. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, I'm going to continue more about some of this stuff with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and how this, uh, this tour owner points game had come to an end with the last race that they had at the, in Long Island at Riverhead Raceway. We'll be back. Hey, this is Chris Les Jake, and if InRavio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Weller. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we're going to punch in the d But if you have this bracelet from inradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on. Or else. 
For over 60 years, Hansen Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hansen Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansenCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hansen Carpet has got you covered. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Hey, we're back. Hey, I want to just um, take a mention. Uh, Tracy Chirico, I see, is in the chat room. Tracy, your business operations manager at the, manager at the Bethel Motor Speedway up in Bethel. Uh, Tracy, uh, thanks for coming on. I know you're a busy person. Tracy, is there anything you want to tell us? Some, anything upcoming at your facility in the next couple of weeks or towards the end of the season or whatever? Uh, feel free to, to throw it in there on the chat room. Uh, we'd be more than happy to share it. And if anybody is on, that we interviewed from Bethel, we should have those interviews probably next week for you um, on as we go, uh, the top three series have off, so we'll be able to place some of those interviews. Uh, we, have, we have Chris, Chris Rogers, a Legends driver at uh, Long Island that, that runs up in Bethel. It was nice to chat with him. Uh, so it's all good, it's all good. But anyway, going back to this thing. So this Toronto Points thing, it's, it's not going away. And, and, and for years and years and years, if so, such and such an owner was uh, not able or chose not to go to a certain event, a local guy could say, hey, let me use your number. So they would, inter they would enter the race with that car owner's number so that the car owner earned owner points. Well, you know, it, Riverhead, Long Island, is one of the few tracks that also runs tour type modifieds as their feature division. So what would happen is a lot of local guys would make a deal with an owner and say, hey, listen, if you're not coming, I know you're not coming, blah, 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 um, I'll run your number, you'll get the owner points, and, and whatever deal they make over the phone for the payoff, that's, that's you know, between them. So NASCAR got tired of that, because what was happening is Competitors and owners who were there supporting the series and, and always, they, they might get bummed out because a local is using an owner's number and they're eligible for an owner's provisional if they so don't make the race. NASCAR put an end to that. And what they did is they made it so that if that's what you're going to do, that car needs to show up at that racetrack in your hauler with your crew chief. Now, if you're going to send your hauler and you're going to send your crew chief, you might as well load your car up and go. Well, that's what NASCAR wanted. Not that they don't want the locals in the race. They, they do. They want them to earn their way into the race, not buy a number that day and, and make it happen. It goes on in the Sprint Cup Series, um, the, the Xfinity Series, the Camper World Truck Series as well. You know, hey, I'm going to own this car and we'll go from, from there. So uh, I'm kind of glad that NASCAR did that. Not because I want to see locals get bumped out of these races, but because it's just, not that it was a wrong thing to do by, by drivers and owners. They found the loophole, they used it to their advantage, and NASCAR did what they're supposed to do. They closed that loophole right out. And you know, you got, sometimes you gotta read between the lines, and somebody decided, hey, you know what? I could be car number 38 because he has owner points. I could be car number 22. I could be, and just to make it happen. Um, small move on to competitors and the owners. NASCAR, again, like I said, they decided let's, let's close it up. So anyway, uh, Tracy's letting us know. This weekend they have the, the Jerry Regal Memorial uh, race for the um, Bethel Modified, Bethel Motor Speedway Modifieds uh, this coming week. 
And on and the 9 11 tribute that was rained out last week, most of the Northeast was rained out. A full show on the 29th, and then Twin 25, so most divisions except for the Legends and the Bondoleros. And October 3rd will be their final. So um, if you want to take that ride up, it's not a bad ride. You know, I know maybe at the end of a long day, it might be a little tiring. But if you go with Kevin Basic, he'll drive and you can take a nap, which is what I try to do. <laughs> but there you go, uh, Tracy. Thanks for sharing that. So you got the uh, Bethlehem Motor Speedway with mods this weekend, and we do have the 358 Sportsmen's, the Legends, the Bondoleros, the Pro Stocks, Street Stocks, and Four Cylinders. So uh, that's that's all good. So um, I, I'll tell you what, I had a great time there, a great time, and and the food was awesome. I got I got it down. That's, that's one of the ways I judge a racetrack. You know, some people, you know, they judge it by the bathrooms, the seats. I don't care about the seat. I'll stand and watch the race. But, you know, the food's got to be decent, and it's got to be reasonably priced, and, uh, and, it, and it was. And, yes, WJ, it's a long ride home. Um, <laughs> it's a long. But I go to sleep, so it seems like, you know, a couple minutes. As you know, I do fall asleep on the way home from race. But, anyway, it's all good. But uh, going, going back to this thing with the, the numbers, and I'm glad NASCAR put an end to that. I, I just wish that would, that's a rule that would flow up. When I say flow up, flow up to the the other series as well, the Academy World Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Sprint Cup Series, because there's a lot of game playing in that, and especially when you see some of these start, and, and believe it or not, there's starting posts in the cup level, and the Xfinity level, and the truck level. There's people who just kind of ride around, and just to get some points, make the show. I know at Richmond, two guys did not make the race. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't recall who they were, but two guys did not make the race um, for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, that provisional thing, you know, it's it's it's... It's a big thing. And again, you know, just ask, ask somebody who's towed for like three or four hours to a racetrack to only not make it and have to go home. You, you, you paid your way to get there, whether you took a ferry, you drove over the highway, fuel in your hauler, um, maybe a hotel room paid for you and your crew to get in. You bought a set of tires minimum, you know, a couple hundred bucks worth of fuel for the race car, and you don't make the show. That's kind of wow. That makes it for a long, long ride home. You didn't make it, you know, and, and, and you spent all this money and there's no pay. You don't make the show, there's no payoff. You get points. Non-qualifiers get points, but you don't get any payoff. So, um, and, and that's why these points, these owner points are so valuable, so valuable because it gets you into the races that you might not have gotten into or couldn't get into or you had mechanical difficulties or the car wasn't turning or whatever the case was. But all important is now next year comes, where were you in the points those first three races? Where were you in the points last year? For those first three races where they go by last year. You have a rain out. Oh, let's line them up by owner points. Whoa, I don't have any. I guess I'm not racing today. Things like that. Things like that, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. So uh, we'll just go from there. So what do we got? What else? Some, some of the stuff going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kyle Busch Motorsports filed suit in North Carolina Supreme Court in Iredell County recently, accusing former driver Justin Boston and sponsor Zloop of failing to pay $650,000 of a $3.2 million sponsorship agreement with the team. Zloop is a computer recycling company co-founded by Bob Boston, father of Justin Boston. Uh, they alleged that they made only five payments totaling $1.55 million before missing scheduled payments due in May and June. Kyle Busch Motorsports claims it is owed $4,020, little over $4 million, I'm sorry, on a two-year contract originally worth $6.4 million. Loop filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy last month, and Bob Boston also faces a $28 million lawsuit by a former investor claiming Boston falsely inflated the value of his company and properly diverted funds to his son's racing career. Now, I'll tell you what. This is something I've heard of, not only on, on this higher level, but boring level, weekly room, where a guy has a business and his race car draws a out go racing. Get a double write-off there. You're writing off the expenses to go racing, but now you've, you, you have a race car on your payroll. I know a competitor who's going to shall remain nameless who took, took a couple of grand a week out of the till on paper for the race car. 
I gotta pay the race car. I gotta pay the race car. Now I don't know what when he sat down with his accountant at tax time, what he did or how he got away with any of that. But those are the things you just don't do. You just don't do that. And here you know you have an agreement. I'm gonna pay you X number of dollars. We're gonna go race and let's go buy, 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 and everything's on credit. Boom! Oh, I can't pay that bill. Pfft, bankrupt. And and that's some of the things that that happen. And uh, you know, Kyle Busch Motorsports, of course, they're not racing uh, with Justin Boston anymore. Obviously, he lost his ride or progress. But uh, it's. Uh, just one of those things, you know, it's just one of those things. And also that uh, Tony Stewart, Kevin Ward thing is not going away, the family suing Tony Stewart. And, and I'll tell you what, I, 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 I'm really upset with the lawyer who took the case, because if he watched the video, the guy did everything in his power wrong, he, A, getting out of his race car, B, you're gonna go after somebody who's in a race car driving, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I know I, I was a hothead as a, as a racer years ago, and, and I understand that. But you know what? I'm thinking if I got out of my car to go beat up somebody while their car is driving, and I got run over and killed, I, I, would, I would think my family would say, Joe, you're an idiot, and, and, and that, that would be the end of it. And, and then the judge that takes on this case, that doesn't throw it out, it's just beyond me. And I. I I've watched so many angles of this video. I've watched so many, I don't know, people talk and listen to people talk about it. Uh, I, I, I watched a documentary on it not too long ago uh, showing some of the stuff and, and, and it, even a different angle of the crisis. See, that one that everybody's showing, it looks like, whoa, Tony ran this guy over. Tony never saw him, never saw him. He wearing a black suit on a, on a clay track in a poorly lit racetrack. Come on, you never saw him. The guy had no business getting out of his car, and this lawsuit is frivolous. And what should happen now is these people should pay the legal fees that, to Tony Stewart and, and, his, and his people for bringing on such a frivolous lawsuit. And the lawyer that agreed to take the case should be a part and parcel to that lawsuit as well, and, and, and should be paying all the court costs and whatever it costs Tony Stewart for his attorneys. Because that's just nonsense. That's not nonsense. And uh, yeah, Mr. Freeport, I used to be. Yeah. Um, all right, Trace, you didn't have to agree 110%. 100% would have been fine. It would have been just fine. But anyway, um, it's all good. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about what's going on with the, the modified series and, uh, and uh, some other things as well, like Chase and the top three, what they did this weekend when we come back. Hey, this is Chris Lust Jake, and if inravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Weller. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punched in the d But if you have this bracelet from inradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. 
The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Hey, welcome back. Uh, Tracy, for those that are not uh, watching the chat room, uh, Tracy was agreeing with my uh, lawsuit thing, 110%, not my hothead thing. And uh, for those who don't know, Tracy, when, when I, I purchased a, a race car for my daughter from her husband, Chris Strika, and uh, Tracy came with the car. It was, like, pretty cool. She was, uh, she was our tire specialist and whatever else needed to be done. Uh, it, was, it was nice. We had, a good, we had some good times then. And I had this sponsor that I had this, I have to be a good person, model, citizen clause in. So, uh, <laughs> so I was kind of mellow. Uh, it was kind of mellowed me out. But anyway, uh, some uh, NASCAR notes. Jimmy Johnson signed a two-year two contract extension, um, as well as his sponsor Lowe's with uh, Hendrick Motorsports. So that will carry him through the 2017 season. Jimmy Johnson is 41 years old and the number one seed in the 2015 chase. Uh, let's see, Michael McDowell, I'm sure everybody saw Michael McDowell hit the safety truck at Richmond's, on Mitch Richmond's backstretch this past Saturday night. Now, I got I to gotta tell you, you got to pay attention. And you're on the racetrack, and, and you're under yellow. So, you know what, you follow the guy or gal in front of you, you just cruise along or whatever that speed is, and, you know, I, I can't blame the spotter. I can't say, no, oh, the spotter should have said the, the, the Cleto truck's there. I mean, you, you know it's there. There's flashing lights. You're driving. What was he doing? What, what was he doing? You know, I mean, come on. I mean, he tore his car up pretty bad. He tore that car up, and, you know, and, and I'm just glad nobody got seriously injured in that, uh, that little melee because that could have been quite ugly. That, that just could have been ugly. He could have ran over a, a track worker, even though they're in, in, in brightly colored gear and, and doing their thing and flashing lights. But... You know, come on, come on, come on. Mike, what were you thinking? What, what, what can you think? I, I don't know. But uh, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things that uh, you, you wonder, like, you, what the heck? Come on, pay attention, pay attention. You know, you're cruising along, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, because I believe that's what the caution speed is. They go whatever pit road speed is, and they slow them down a bit. And, you know, and, you, and you, you, you hit the safety truck. Come on. I don't know what you were thinking. You just don't know. I just don't know. And the Camper World Truck Series is off uh, this past weekend, and they, they returned to action until sep September 18th at Chicagoland Speedway. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour is, was also off. They're going to have a month off since their last race until they race again at New Hampshire, and they'll be at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway at the end of this month. And the NASCAR Wheel and Southern Modified Tour uh, has a, has a two-week layoff, and then they'll be running at South Boston, a very nice facility. I had the opportunity to work there a few times. Um, very nice and very good, good, tough, hard race in there. Put on a good show in South Boston. But, uh, that's where it is. Not a chase. I want to explain this chase a little bit for those who don't know. It's down to 16 drivers, 10 races, three elimination rounds, and a four-way battle for the championship. They'll reset the points. The first round, there'll be four taken out. Boom. And the winner guaranteed, any winner, if you win any of those races, you guarantee the spot in the next round. Then you go to the challenger round, eliminate four more drivers. Then you go to the contender round, four more drivers eliminated. Eliminate a round, four more. And then the championship round goes down to four drivers vying for the Sprint Cup championship. Uh, like a playoffs, so to speak. And whether you agree with this, the format or not, um, it's, it's kind, of, kind of creates an interest creates an awareness. What was happening is in, in the past, you come to this two, three, four races left and there's usually one or two teams that are out in front and if basically if they show up and finish last, they're gonna win the championship. So who's gonna watch? You're gonna just flick on, oh, let's see, what, what lap, who's winning? Oh, good, and go back to your football game. And I think NASCAR did this and just to get people to watch 
the races, because they mean something. These races will mean something. You know, on any, any given night, anybody could be bumped out. And you know, the fact that you got to win a race to get in, great, good, good deal. Because let's reward winners um, at, at this level of racing. Uh, you know, the old system, you could win a not win a race, and still win the championship. I don't know, a lot of people didn't like that. You know, uh, yeah, Kevin Basic, long on E for speed. He's saying go back to old time racing with no chase. Okay, maybe in the weekly series, I think. But on this top level, you got to understand something. It, it costs a lot of money to put these shows on. And what they have to do is make that happen. They got to make that money somehow. And they got to create the entrance. And they got to sell TV time. And it's pretty tough to sell TV time because, let's say, if I was say, Jimmy Johnson locked it up with three races left. Who's going to watch the next three races? It's going to be tough to sell that commercial time. But those last four events, man, they're going to watch that. They're going to be able to get that commercial time and, and, and pay it. And considering that the, the teams get a piece of the TV package, I think that's a good deal. It's a win-win for everybody. You know, um, I, I didn't like it at all in the beginning. I, I was, you know, I'm, I'm an old school guy. The guy who finishes per, in first at the end has the most points is the champion. But, you know, let's make it interesting. I mean, not the way football makes it where... You know, a team that's seven and nine gets into the playoffs. No, I'm, they're not doing that. You have to win. You have to earn your way in. Uh, like hockey years ago, they used to play a 16, an 82 game, game season to eliminate four teams and then uh, these playoff rounds, and whoever was hot won the Stanley Cup. I don't, I don't agree with that. But this, this I think, is, is better than it was. It's not, it's not perfect yet, but I think NASCAR is working on that, trying to make that happen. Because they're constantly and continuously trying to improve the product that they put in the street and put on the TV for the people because that's where they make their money. And let's face it, if they're not making their money, they're not going to they're not gonna do it. You know, and, uh, and yet, you're Mr. Freeport, I agree. This chase has put a lot of pressure on the teams, you know, and, uh, and it does. It makes the races, I think, more exciting because you're not just riding around. You're not points chasing anymore, see? You're not points chasing. And, and I know a lot of competitors that do that. They're just riding around and, and, they, and they just I gotta get points. I gotta get points, and and I know my local racetrack, and I and I figure this out every year because I'm a numbers guy. When I have nothing to do and I'm bored, you know, you you could finish like fourth every week and win your track title. Finish fourth every week. Some divisions you can finish fifth every week and win the title. You're just it's riding around, but you know what? Races want to race. Races want to put the helmet on and, and squeeze their brains and, and try to win everything, and that's what happens at some of these weekly tracks. That's why you tear up a lot of equipment because they're not racing with their heads, but still in all, points, chase points. An old figure eight driver said that to me. It's about the points. Get the points. Get the points. And he drilled it into my head. Get the points. Get the points. So, you know, all right, so you're happy with the top five, you know? And especially in the division I was in, the top five, we paid more money than wins in the other three divisions, you know, that were also racing there. So, you know, you got to do those things. got to do those things. So anyway... So it's like I said, the Camp World Truck Series was off. The Xfinity Series was at Richmond. They will be at Chicagoland on September 19th on a Saturday. And the trucks will be there Friday night. But the, in the Xfinity results, Chase Elliott was the winner with Kyle Busch second from the pole. Brian Scott was third. Joey Logano was fourth. Eric Jones was fifth. Regan Smith was sixth. Josh Belray was seventh. Ty Dillon eighth. Austin Dillon ninth. And Chris Brucher rounding out the top ten. In the Sprint Cup Series... Uh, Matt Kenseth was the winner, Kyle Busch second, Joey Logano third from the pole, Eric Amarola just missing the chase and finished fourth, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was fifth, Denny Hamlin sixth, Jeff Gordon seventh, Brad Keselowski eighth, Jimmy Johnson ninth, and, uh, and, and uh, Clint Boyer rounding out the top ten. So that's all good and well. So we're coming down to this to the wire. Ten races left. Let's see who's going to do it. And I'll tell you what, it, it's, it always comes down to a Hendrick Motorsports car. And why is that? You know, a lot of people say because the bender rules. I don't know about that. Why is it if, if it, you have a winning team, whether it's at the lowest level at your lowest weekly racetrack or in the Spring Cup Series, the guy who's winning is cheating. Everybody's, oh, they're cheating. They must be cheating. They just haven't been caught. I, I, I don't agree with that. Hendrick Motorsports does their homework. They, they, their team back at the shop does their homework and they work hard. They, and, and they've prepared themselves for this. You know, when you have all the cars that they have and all the resources they have and all the money that they have, they get the best of the best of the best. And it kind of goes in cycles. Kind of goes in cycles. 
You know, eventually Hendrick Motorsports is gonna fade away. Think about Hendrick Motorsports, Jimmy Johnson, who's 41 years old now, and he has two years remaining on his contract extension, so he'll be 43 years old, you know, what's gonna happen when he's gone? Jeff Gordon's already announced a retirement, he'll probably run select shows next year. So what, what happens when they're gone? What happens? Now it's gonna be somebody else's turn. Maybe Chip Ganassi Racing will step up. Maybe Joe Gibbs and his guys will step to the plate. How about Roush Fenway? You know, it's, it's, it could happen, it could happen, you know? But uh, I don't know. I, 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 my money's on Hendrick Motorsports to win the chase, one of those cars. Um, not who I'd like to see, not that I have a, I'm a favorite, but I, I'd, I'd like to see somebody different. I'd like to see somebody different. I'd like to see somebody get in and win that chase that's never won it before, first time guy. First time guy. I mean, man, Jimmy John, how many, how many championships is he gonna win? He has 74, 75 wins in the Sprint Cup Series. Jeff Gordon's like 85, 86. I know Jeff's done, Jimmy, you know, maybe he'll win a few more races over the next couple of years. But you know what? It's not like it was in the 60s and the 70s where they were running 50, 60 races a year every week. They loaded up the truck and loaded the car, went racing, and they came home you know, in the winter to build a new car. It's not like that anymore. Richard Petty won 27 races in 1967. 27 races he won. You're not gonna see that today. You'll never see that again. You know, so he, he's got his 200 wins, the next place, second place guy's 105, so nobody's gonna get that. Nobody's gonna, you know, but uh, WJ is saying, Hendrick will pay the most money to whichever turns out the best for years to come. Look who he's bought for his current group. Absolutely, I don't disagree with that. But who's available? Who's available to, to jump into Jimmy Johnson's race seat? Who's available? Who's gonna be available in 2017? when that happens, or 2018. I don't know, I just don't know. It's, it's, it's gonna be interesting as, as the years go on. And, and the other thing is if you take away these multi-car teams, and if each owner came with just one car, it'd only be about 30 cars, and not the 45, 46 that are showing up every week. You know, and, and 22 figure eight, as he says, Rick Hendrick's getting old and doesn't have his son anymore. So who knows how long it's going to go. Absolutely. Like I said, it goes in cycles. Right now, it's their turn. Whose turn is it next? The cycle continues, but always with somebody else. Always with somebody else. And that's what happens. And, and, and not only in, in auto racing, the dynasties in hockey, the dynasties in baseball. You, know, you see a certain team in, in these sports. You know, they're competitive and, and winning everything for years and years and years, and, and always in the, the playoffs and getting into the finals, and all of a sudden, boom, they're not there anymore. Football, baseball, hockey, it happens. The Islander dynasty of the 80s, what happened to them? They just faded away to nothing, had trouble making the playoffs. Same thing with the, you know, the, the Yankees, all those championships, right? They got 28 championships, but it, it took 100 years. They're struggling, it's just one of those things. But, you wonder what happened to some of these teams. You know, the Wood Brothers with David Pearson, they were so good and so strong for so long. Now the, the Wood Brothers pick and choose the races. They, they don't pay their drivers a lot of money, so they don't get that good talent. They don't have the, the sponsorship that they had. They were backed by, by Ford and, and, you know, factory. they're out of it. They're out of it. You know? I don't know. But as Bonnie Dumplin says, it's the chemistry of the people. And I agree with that. Everybody's got to get along. Because when you, when you have a bunch of egos in a race shop, somebody always thinks they could do it better and, and they alienate other people on the team. Let's just do it together. Right? And as Chris Rogers says, well, unfortunately, all good things do come to an end. And I agree with that. That's, that does happen. Anyway, we're going to take a break. When we come, come back, we'll uh, do the, the wrapping up portion of the show today when we come back. What's up, guys? We're Scan Off Fair, and we're here with Enravio. If they catch you at a show with one of these bracelets, you will win a hundred bucks. 
That's a lot of money. So get a bracelet. Do whatever it takes to get that. Hit him up online. <laughs>advertising has changed radio tv and newspaper revenues have declined drastically why because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be so what can we do about it well that's easy advertise online own a local restaurant real estate agency or even a national retail chain whatever your business in radio can get your message out there and we can do it at a fraction of the cost call today and see the difference for yourself this isn't tv this isn't radio this is in radio.com Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Marshall Weller. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punched in the d- But if you have this bracelet from nradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. we're back uh you guys in the chat room you're having a lot of fun i see uh uh yes kevin i'll do that uh wj's done when they're all toyotas i don't understand i I, you know this toyota thing bothered me for years i don't know of any two-door toyota that's in the street or any eight-cylinder toyota with rear-wheel drive just throwing it out there, folks. Not trying to, you know, be a wise guy. Uh, I just don't understand that whole thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you guys are picking on people, I see. Oh, that's nice. Anyway, um, yeah, you know, it's, for the longest time, it was, it was Ford, Chevrolet, Chrysler. Then you go, you know, back, go back to the 50s. It was the Nash, the Hudson Hornet back in the day. You know, and and I, I guess they use what's popular because the old adage, you know, win on Sunday, you sell on Monday. But you know what? You take the decals off these cars, and it's hard to tell what's what because they all have to fit the template. And, and, and I know I was in the R&D center, and I saw the stock production vehicle parked next to the race car. And um, the lines were pretty close, you know, even with the trucks, which it's hard to believe, but they were pretty close. The trucks might have been a little higher up in the air. But uh, the body lines were pretty much what it was stock-wise. And that's what was different back in the, in, in the day with the, with the race cars. You could look at it and see what it was. You could look at it and see what it was. And you, you, you knew the, the, the Mercury. You knew the Plymouth. You knew the, the, the Chevy, you know. Um, and, and they used the name. They didn't just say Chevrolet. Well, and now, you know, back in the day, they'd say 65 Impala. Uh, 66 Ford Fairlane. You know, now it's just Chevy, Ford, Toyota. You know, and, and Chrysler obviously is, is not, a, not a player anymore. But I don't know. I, I just don't know. But uh, uh, but <laughs> uh, you guys have fun. You know, Mr. Freeport, the Plymouth, the Dodge, the Pontiac, the Chevy, the Mercury, the Oldsmobile. I mean, man, it was. You could tell the cars when you look at those old pictures of these, these cars on the racetrack, you, you look at these things and you could point it out, wow, and that's, that's a Mercury. You can't do that. When they do those, those, I call them headshots of the race cars coming down the front stretch, you have the whole field coming at you. You can't tell. You used to be able to tell by the headlights, not a decal. And all the decals look the same to me. You know? um, same thing at the short track. So you're absolutely correct on 22 figure eight. Take a modifier, take a tour type modifier, an SK type modifier, 
they look exactly the same. You know, I, I, at Marty Heim was a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a, a, a person who, who was a scorer for over 50 years. And she goes, when I first started scoring, we scored by hand on a piece of paper with a pencil. And she goes, I was at these races so often, I, I knew by the, the color of the car who it was, well, the way the driver sat, with the body style, I, I knew, I just knew who it was. So I, I don't know that now it's all transponders and you, know, you can go in and click and type and overtype and override. So, but uh, the standard body rules uh, uh, kind of showed up when Toyota put money into NASCAR. Yeah, they did. They did. And the old Michael Waltrip decided he was going to run the house car, and NASCAR said, no, Toyota needs to run good today. You're going to run our car. And he goes, no, I want to run a Michael Waltrip car. And then guess what happens? Michael Waltrip's car is DQ'd in tech. Oh, he ends up running the NASCAR car. Hmm, that's a good finish. I'm not, I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying. And, and I remember that, Mr. Freeport. I remember when the Grand Nationals and the, and the Modifieds ran together. I remember Richie Evans down in Daytona with fenders on his Modified. It, looked like, it, it was like supposed to be a Camaro. I remember those days, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. But uh, I know uh, we only got about a little less than 10 minutes left, so we, we, got, a, we got a public service announcement to make tonight. So we're going to make a little announcement uh, shortly once they get it up on the screen for me. But uh, you know, just going forward at racing and, and the modifieds, and let's, let's talk about modifieds again. Modifieds were called modifieds because you took a stock reduction car and you modified it. The street stocks were street socks because they looked like a street production car. You know, the street socks became the, the, the Grand Nationals, the Grand Nationals then become the Sprint Cup. You know, and, and that was at that level. And uh, they didn't have that second division years ago. Everybody was a Grand National. And then they come up with the, the, uh, the, the, the I don't want to say lower division, but the, the, the division below that. And, you know, and they got a title sponsor. And all of a sudden, they were this, they were that, they were the other thing, and on and on and on. But anyway. Anyway, but before we wrap up, uh, we've got a public service announcement. We're going to do a little, little thing to uh, a person who does a lot of work for us here, uh, Kevin Basic, Long Island Need for Speed. Uh, Kevin is a volunteer fireman at the North Lindenhurst Fire Department. And uh, Halloween is just around the corner, so if you're looking for plans to make the night special, we got you covered. The boys over at the North Lindenhurst Fire Department, company number five station, are back once again hosting their always amazing annual Halloween bash, October 24th at 6.30 p.m. The doors will open and you'll join a massive group of amazing people enjoying great music from an expert DJ, a delicious dinner, beer, wine, soda, and a bunch of other fun events from a costume contest and door prizes. The party starts at 7 p.m. and tickets are only $30 per person. That's October 24th at 1630 Stray Path in North Lindhurst, New York. Hope to see you there. Uh, from what I understand, it's an awesome, awesome bash, great time. Um, if you're looking to do something for the Halloween uh, time, and it's a week before, so you it know, won't interfere at other Halloween parties. It's a great time, great music, great people. I've been to an affair or two at the North Lindenhurst Fire Department, and I've always had a good time there, good people, and uh, they treat you good. Uh, not as good as Tracy treats us at Bethel, or, 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 or treat us at uh, Orange County Fair Speedway in New Egypt. New London Waterford Speedball, but uh, because we get there for free, and <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, uh, but, but it's going to be a good time. Um, so if you're looking to go to a party Halloween, it's, it's nice. You get to dress up, you get to, you know, act yourself, and people, you just tell people you're in costume, and it'll work out. Uh, but uh, anyway, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Freeport, he's not going, Kevin's not going as a lifeguard in a Speedo, trust me. Trust me, he's going to go probably as a fireman, or maybe buy one of my fire suits to go as a race car driver. I think that's what he's looking to do. One of those two things, go as a fireman, because he has all the gear for it. And, uh, and he could borrow my fire, so he wants to be a race car driver for the day. Uh, but anyway, look at my car, tie keeps falling off. But uh, I don't know, this weekend, uh, the top three series are off. They had the Chicago Land the week after with the Trucks Friday, Xfinity Saturday, and the Sprint Cup Series on, uh, on that Sunday. Uh, we have the uh, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour will be at New Hampshire at the end of the month. That's always an awesome, awesome show, an awesome, awesome week at New, uh, New, uh, yeah, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Um, they have a lot of divisions going in. The K&M Pro Series is, is up there. The Act Tour, the Modifieds, uh, and the Cup, and that Saturday, Sunday week. It is just a, it's a great place. So uh, if you're looking to have a good time, make plans to go to New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Uh, the improvements 
that Bruton Smith made after purchasing the facility from Bob Bear. I thought Bob Bear had outdone himself when he made some of his improvements, but then, you know what, another guy comes in, sees a different direction, and bam. It's a, it's a nice place, very family friendly as well. I've taken my, my kids there when they were small and uh, you know, they were treated like they were seasoned veterans. It's all good, all good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just out of the corner of your eye, you see something in the chat room. 22 figure, that was cold, man. <laughs> that was cold. <laughs> uh, for those who missed it, uh, 22 figure eight saying uh, Kevin Basic on uh, Long Island East Street is going to go to the Halloween party as a spelling teacher. So that ought to be good. He'd probably win first prize with that, that costume. Now I'm jumping on the bandwagon too. Look at that. But I think he went to his meeting. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know, WJ New Hampshire, it's, it's pretty kind of flat there. You know, as you said, if, if that place were banked a little more, I think the racing would be a lot more interesting. And, uh, but. Uh, We'll, we'll see how that pans out, but anyway, anyway. Uh, so, again, uh, it's this coming Saturday here on Long Island. It'll be a Barbara and Jim Cromedy's last, I guess, racing event, other than the Enduros the week after, but this, this week they'll have, um, this week coming up, they'll have their farewell. They're gonna have a farewell meeting with the drivers. I guess they're gonna thank them, and I know uh, uh, I really haven't spoken about that place since I've been doing this show, but, uh, Time for them to move on, and they've sold the place. They put it in good hands. Uh, they do a farewell to, to the drivers and the teams that have supported the facility ever since they took it over and even before that. Um, so, so that's a good thing. And, and change is good. Change is good. It, it, it was time. Um, I'm glad they sold it to a, a couple, an individual, who's going to keep it a racetrack. Well, that was everybody's concern for years and years and years. Selling the track, selling the track, selling the track. Home Depot's coming in, Lowe's is coming in. All these places are coming in. You know what? Nobody came in. Nobody came in. It was all rumors. It was a lot of people just trying to stir the pot. And, uh, you know, I, I've been going to Riverhead Raceway now uh, on and off probably oh, 45 years. Before the Cromedies took it over and bought it, you know, I, I remember watching the Bombers race out there. and. You know, going with my grandfather, going out to going out to Riverhead. It was like a hike from Babylon. It was it was the expressway was getting to the expressway was a nightmare back in those days. Sunrise Highway. It was it seemed like there was a light on every other corner, but it was well worth it. I have some fond fond memories of, of Riverhead Raceway growing up as a kid, and I'm looking forward to Eddie and Connie Parchers running that place next year and making it the best racetrack that it could possibly be. And already he's putting people in place to make that happen. So. Uh, Again, a, a farewell to Barbara and Jim Cromedy. Um, it was time. They, they were old, they were, they were over on the years, and they're in their 80s, and they, they did the best that they could with what they had at the time. And, you know, when you get that age, you get to that age, you, you're not as hungry as you were when you were in your 30s and 40s, and you just want to make it happen. And you just want to make it happen, and you just want to see the races come and, and run the races and, and do your thing. I wish them well. I wish them well and as they move on to their retirement. Um, and I wish uh, Eddie and Connie Parchers only the best in moving forward. But anyway, we got a couple minutes left. I want to wrap up here. So I want to thank everybody again. We had a, a very busy chat. A lot of people in there that I didn't recognize. So, and that's always a good thing. I want to thank Tracy, Tracy Trinkle uh, from Bethel Motor Speedway for taking time out of her busy, busy schedule. And I'll tell you what, I watched her run around that racetrack. She does everything but sweep the track, and I think if she needed to, she would have. So I want to thank you, for Tracy, for coming on and sharing some of the events that are coming on in, in your track as well. And, uh, and, and we're all good. So I want to wish everybody a, a good week. Wherever your racing endeavors will bring you this week, please be careful, please be safe. Give somebody a hug, tell them you love them. God bless you all, and thanks for sharing tonight. We'll see you next week.